तो वाई डू वी हैव टू पे मनी टू हायर अ गेम डिजाइनर वेन आई माई सेल्फ कैन डू इट What are the top three things that you think are traits of a game designer that are going to help you to succeed? It would probably. How is free-to-play game design different from the traditional game design? A lot of people don't realize that the best-paying jobs for game design in India at this point are. If you want to be a good free-to-play game designer, you have to play a lot of free-to-play games. You cannot. just be that casual guy who would play for 5 minutes a day and then play to play games all day long what is up people today we have with us jiku man <laughs> in the flesh <laughs> I'm actually here. This is like actually a podcast in which I'm sitting with him. So we are at Spartan Day, and we decided to just shoot this spontaneous yeah. podcast, and we're going to be talking about game yeah. design Correct. in the Indian context. Okay, so so Jiku, tell us about in India, right? Game design is actually a very niche thing. Yeah. True. Right. That's that's absolutely right. Yes. They are not. I mean, game design is something which is new because mm-hmm. I think. Five or ten years ago, the role kind of didn't exist yeah. because people were like, "Why are we gonna pay a game designer to like wear shorts and slippers and come into the studio and just write some documentation? Yeah. We can do that ourselves, yes. right?" Yes. So, what has changed? Oh, a lot. I mean, see, ten years back when I came into this particular field, of course, it was absolutely new. No one really knew about it. but even after 10 years i mean i was actually expecting india to be like at the forefront of game development after 10 years this is like 2012 but now we are in 2024 we are still we are still not there right. yes there have been like massive strides that are taken right now but we still haven't reached there now coming to a game designer perspective people are now realizing especially into free to play games that it's not easy to understand a player's psychology you can be a good game designer only if you know your player base and that's not just knowing player as a whole within the players itself there are so many different segmentations there are attackers there are you know collectors there are achievers there are so many different type of players even within the target audience that you are basically chosen for your game right, right? so basically what i'm trying i think what we are talking about here is that You need someone who understands psychology of players. Yes. You need someone who understands a player base, what they like, yes. what they like to do, what they don't like to do. Yes. And this is specifically something. Yes. This is the main core skill of a game designer yes. is to understand Correct. what players want, what they don't want, yes. how they spend money, what makes them happy, what makes them sad, what makes them frustrated. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, so that do you think that has changed? No, it, it hasn't it, changed. It, so it. it wasn't that up until this point in time everyone actually thought exactly the way you thought as well like you know why do we have to pay money to hire a game designer when i myself can do it who am i i'm like the ceo of the company or maybe anyone right but then they realize that you need to know your player base that is where a game designer comes into picture and then now so when so i am a game design consultant right now right so a lot of studios across the world calls me and tells them about their problems sure. including game loft right. right so i just had a call with them last week and they were like you know they uh, one particular game they were really good but right now they are not doing great they asked me to study that particular game i studied it and i told them these are the problems right so people want a fresh pair of eyes mm-hmm. to look at and they realize that only a game designer can do this an experienced game designer probably right so people are realizing that at this point in time right it never existed and also a lot of people come and say oh i want to be a specifically a level designer i want to be a narrative designer and these are the most common i want to be a systems designer right so people in india who want to have specific roles mm-hmm. what advice do you give them <laughs> be a generalist <laughs> okay see um I have been a generalist all of my entire 12 13 years of career. If Okay, I can give you multiple examples of people who really wanted to be level designers and have been level designing for 3 to 4 years of their life who are now damn dude, you know, I want to do something different. But 
they were level designers for five years. Their expertise is in level designing. And when they suddenly switch into systems, systems are all about, you know, formulas, math, Excel sheets, simulating, you know, so many stuff. They're not able to do it. But had they given the systems a thought in the initial stages of their game design career, things would have been a bit different. If you're going to top-notch studios, if you're not going into a startup, then you will definitely be specialized into something that you're actually doing, right? And he was into that particular situation as well. I'd say be a generalist, at least in the initial, you know, three, four years of your career. You may think that narration is your top most skill, but you never know. You never know. I mean, systems are not very complicated. There are so many other game design. Ultimately, be a generalist in the first two, three years of, of your career. That's because, you know, you may actually think narrative, for example, is your biggest skill, but it may not really be. I was actually thinking my strong skill was like coming up with ideas, but that was not the case at all. It, things change and you will realize what you really are. What I really love UI prototyping, Figma and all those things now. I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm better as a graphic designer probably. <laughs> you never know. And right. you'll find that out and then probably focus on that particular thing so that you enjoy it much more rather than just thinking that, you know, I love level design. But see, working as a level designer is completely different from being a casual level designer who you think you would be. You will have to work with strict deadlines. You will have to make sure every single level that you your players play. See, if you're making a match three level, for example, right, for Royal Match, you, you might have already played Royal Match or Gardenscapes and you, you would know that every single level is a close call. You have to make that with your players and that's not easy. It has... It's... It's mentally very, very draining because if you don't achieve what your management wanted you to achieve with your levels, you are going to hate that job, right? So you find what really makes you happy and then probably specialize on that. Plus, oh, I shouldn't say this plus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That plus <laughs> was about AI, but not now. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, so, I, so I guess what you're saying is that Playing a game and enjoying the narrative of a game is one thing, but not necessarily that you, if you enjoy game narrative, that you may be a good narrative designer or enjoy it. Both ways. So, yes, that is definitely there. Let's say in, in Gamer to Maker, we, 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 uh, I was talking to a few guys, not just in Gamer to Maker, but in NID as well. They have created games, small, small games, and they, that particular person thought he's really good at narratives. Right? He really enjoyed story. He has created a narrative. But when people went through that particular narrative, the story, he realized that people are not enjoying the story. People are not understanding what he was trying to convey with that particular story, which was pretty demotivating for that particular guy. He actually felt as if, like, you know, I wanted to be this but now nobody is enjoying whatever I'm writing. What will I do with my life? So he is coming to me asking for advices. I'm like, what if you are better with something else? Have you ever tried anything like right. level design, for example? Right. Right. But if you are limiting, if you are limiting yourself into that one particular aspect of game design in the early stages of your career, you might be missing out on a lot of other stuff that you haven't realized yet that you're good at. Right. So another thing. So in India, I mean, you you know a decent amount about the the game design scene in India. So what are the actual specializations available? Have you heard of people getting hired as narrative designers, level designers, systems yeah. designers? Yeah. Like, are there these specialized roles actually available in India, or is it just like game designer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in AAA, I mean, we are talking only about free to play, right? So yeah. in to play, to be honest, yes, all of these things. I mean, kind it's not, of exist, there's not much to play in but India. Not much over here. So, in free to play game, all this exists, but in top studios. Top studios. Only in top studios. Like EA and like Zynga. Scooby. They have big design teams, which means they have all these specializations. They have. Right? right. And their design team is like 15, 20. Right. Right. So, so they can have. So, what are the kind of specializations that you know exist in India? Huh. So this is definitely systems designer. 
there is gameplay design. So, what, what are, explain what a systems designer does. Okay, systems are like it's a combination of mechanics, mechanics that connects together. So, let's say upgrade. Upgrade is a system. So, whenever you are designing an upgrade, you basically have to decide, you know, what are the characters that are upgrade worthy, how many levels of upgrades would basically be there, what stat would increase for each of these upgrades, what are the costs for each of these upgrades. Cost are basically sinks, so you have to connect that with sources, right? So you basically have a big ass Excel sheet in front of you that simulates a player's experience. Right. If you are playing this particular game that I'm making mm -hmm. for the very first time, how long will it take? So we are simulating that entire player experience with respect to this systems, the upgrade system that we have created, right? How long will it take for you to completely, com I mean, to finish all the entire upgrades? How long will it take for the player to reach from upgrade number one to upgrade number two? It, it, it basically is a simulation of the cause and effect of the upgrade. Yes. Right, right. So okay. that's basically the gist of a system. It's pretty, it's, it's, it's much bigger than what I've just told you. But in a gist of it, it's a combination of multiple different mechanics that comes together, which gives the player a deep game play impact. Right. That's the system. There are so many different systems, like upgrade is just one, there is progression system. Battle Pass in itself can be considered as a system. There are so many different systems. Right. right. And also, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that the best paying jobs for game design in India at this point are actually in free to play game design. Mm -hmm. Right. So, how is free to play game design different from the traditional game design? Yeah. Traditional game design was all about making the game fun. Right. And if you enjoy playing a game that is actually fun, which also means that you can actually make a game that is fun. Right? But when it comes to free-to-play gaming, it's not just about making the game fun. It's also about learning a lot of nuances. Systems, for example, right? Or marketing, for that matter. A game designer has a lot of say when it comes to marketing assets as well. You know, these days we have a lot of playable ads. A game designer sits with the marketing team rigorously and tells designs them the playable ads playable ads you should know about cpis you should know about cac you should know about so many different stuff i know you guys don't know about this stuff what is cpi cpa but that's the point exactly yeah. in india if you want to get a job <laughs> as a game designer you need to know about 60 different abbreviations right so i guess my next question would be so you were self taught mm. right yeah you were self taught to a very game large designer, extent yes right so I wish I had a mentor. How to learn, right? Because you are completely self-taught, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose my question is that if someone wanted to learn free-to-play game design, how would you learn it? You can join the Game to Make a program where Jiku is going to be your mentor and teach you free-to-play game design. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to do that and if you want to self-learn free-to-play game design, how do you do that? Play, man. Play free-to-play games understand the psychology behind see every live ops event i mean free to play games are all about live ops and events right every live ops event has a purpose it is either to increase the engagement retention or monetization right within retention i mean this could be like keywords that you might not have heard before but see retention is all about you know the rate at which the players come back to your game engagement is you know how engaged are your players? For example, how many times do they play? How long do they play? Monetization is about making money from your particular game, right? So your live ops events or the, or the, or the games that you play, they have live ops events targeted for any of these three. Some of them, see there is something called as a compulsion loop as well. What is that? It's basically, you know, when you play a free to play game, there is an event that is running currently. At the end of that particular event, you will basically get a, an infinite booster that would probably run for 20 more minutes. That's the ultimate reward. So now what happens? You, you, you had your timetable, entire timetable set in such a way that you would play for 15 minutes of that particular game, at that particular session, that particular time. Okay, And that 15 minutes, now not just you, the game designers who have made that game also knows that you're going to play for 15 minutes. How? 
it's not about the data privacy or anything we have averaged out the numbers we have something called as a session length and on an average across this world we know that 15 minutes i mean this is a very subjective number it changes with games but for, for now let's keep in mind that you know it's 15 minutes that my players play so you played the game you might play it for 13 minutes 20 minutes or maybe 30 minutes right or an hour as well for example just keep it 15 because our average is 15. you played for 15 minutes and we have designed an event in such a way that after you complete 15 minutes you will unlock a booster which is an infinite booster which would run for next 20 minutes so what happens over here is you don't want to miss out on that valuable resource which the game designer just gave you. You know that your time is over. I mean, you had 15 minutes of time which you have exhausted. Now you would probably do something else with your life. But the game designer is like, I'm giving you this for 20 minutes. Yes, of course, you can leave the game. But do you want to make use of this? So that is compulsion loop. So we basically give players newer and newer things to chase after once you're done with one goal there is another goal it's not explicitly told as daily tasks these are implicit these are intrinsic we are not telling you to do it or lose it it should come from within you so that you chase it so there are so many such stuff that game designers from free to play should know it's connecting to your previous question as well so now how can you self-learn is by playing top free to play games and understanding why is it six instead of seven there is a reason for that so basically deconstruction right <coughs> play games play video games play free to play games download free to play games play them understand the player psychology and deconstruct these games deconstruct, deconstruct. the player loops deconstruct how you as a player are being affected why you're doing things yeah. to understand the systems yeah. <coughs> and the player psychology yeah. behind it <coughs> fantastic fantastic so i'd say this point to kind of conclude the one thing jiko i'm gonna ask you what are the top three things that you think are traits of a game designer that are going to help you to succeed oh it would probably be a no-brainer but that's the truth. See, if you have to be, if you want to be a good free-to-play game designer, you have to play a lot of free-to-play games. You cannot, you know, just be that casual guy who would play for five minutes a day and then play to play games all day long. Because both games are completely different. So you have to be a master of free-to-play games if you want to probably be a free-to-play game designer in India. That's number one. And number two is, understand your target audience see every game genre has a demographic associated with it there's a target age associated with it there's a gender associated with it within each of these categorizations there are different type of players right the target audience of an rts game falls somewhere in between twin male about 20 to around 36 i fall into that category but i don't like that particular genre right so even within that target audience category you have to find out who your target audience really is and get feedbacks from those people now if you are a good game designer you will immediately be able to understand the target audience and make games for your target audience how will you do that by talking to them by understanding their likes, dislikes, how much time do they have every single day to play games, stuff like those. Number three, feedbacks. This is something in Gamer to Maker we often talk about. Take feedbacks with a happy face, okay? It shouldn't be like, you know, damn dude, you know, you told my game sucks. No man, you suck. <laughs> you, you cannot do that, right? Only you will be wrong 70% of your time, especially when you are starting in your career. 70% of your time, your manager is going to tell you that your ideas suck. But there would be a reason. If your mentor, if your manager is good, you know, he'll basically tell you why it doesn't suck, right? So if you want to be a good game designer, you yourself have to find things that really sucks in a lot of game, right? You get that feedback to yourself first. So that when you make those games, you don't make the same mistake. 
but you will make different mistakes which you are going to get feedbacks for which you should take with a happy mind feedback feedback is everything all right jiku i think that's all we have time for uh, we are both wearing black but this was accident it's part of day today yeah. it was complete coincidence we did not plan and i am wearing white shoes so not completely all black so thank you so much jiku that was absolutely awesome and hopefully we'll be able to do more of this sometime so thank you so much guys i will see you on the next video let's go bye bye